All right, let's start solving. All those other lessons that I've skipped over so far, let's start solving here. It says, if g of x equals log 9 f of x and g of x equals 0 0.5 x plus 2, what is f of x? So when I gave you all that practice AP classroom exam last class, you had a few of them in this form. What did you do to solve problems like these? Yes. Guess? That's funny. That's funny. Well, if you don't want to guess, what if they give us two values that are the same? What do they share? G. g of x. Let's do a substitution. Instead of saying g of x, I'm going to take what g of x is equal to here and set it equal to this one. Make sense? I'm going to say log base 9 of f of x equals 0 0.5x plus 2. Now, if y'all can get that far, I bet a lot of you are better equipped for this test than you think you are. If you can just realize, oh, I just do a simple substitution. That's all I did there, is I just did a substitution for g of x. That's all I've did so far, is I substituted out g of x. I bet you could solve that. What do you think you need to do from here to, get a sol to solve this? The inverse. The inverse. I have a log that's isolated. What's the opposite of a log that's isolated? Exponential. Yep, it's base. And instead of this, these two switch. Uh, I was talking to Dr. Milano this morning. I liked, he said, he says, uh, anytime you're solving a log, just do around the world. Meaning instead of nine raised to the four power of f of x, he goes nine to this equals that. He says, do around the world. I liked how he said that. So what do we end up having? It's basically how Delta Math teaches you. Raise both to the not power of nine. That's what you're doing. These two cancel each other out. And so what you're left with is f of x equals 9 raised to the power of 0.5x plus 2. And I don't, really don't need a parentheses there. I'm going to take away the parentheses. 0.5x plus 2. <laughs> now that's mathematically accurate. That is the answer, but that's not the form they want it. So let's do our properties to get it in the form that we're going to need it in the test. What can I do when I have a power that's adding together? Remember your properties? We called that a product property. If you have a lot uh, a base with adding powers, what you can do is multiple bases, but those bases now multiply. So it's 9, 0 0.5, 9 to the power of 0.5x times 9 to the power of 2. That right there is called the product property. Product property. That was for exponentials properties. Now, 9 squared is going to become my a. So this time, I want to put this in the front. That's a constant. What is 9 squared? 81. 81. That's my a. Now, I can do a little bit more work on my base here. Now I'm going to do the 0 0.5 here and the x out here. Now that is a property. When you have a base that uh, a power that's multiplying, so over here it was a power that was adding. Now I have a power that's multiplying. I can change it and break apart the powers like this. What do we call that? Power property. Power property. Power raised to a power is equal to the powers multiplying. So now I can simplify to get my final answer. Do you all know what 9 to the 0.5 power is? No. That's a square root. Uh, yeah, it's like 1 half, which is 3. That's right. I'll go ahead and write one step in between. So if you want to write that way, that's the same thing. Whoops, I already wrote the answer. Sorry. That's 9 to the power of 1 half, which means it's a square root. And so our final answer, the way they want it, is we could say f of x equals 81 times 3 to the power of x. There's your equation right there. Uh, off to the side, I'll put 9 to the 0 0.5 is equal to 9 to the 1 half which is equal to the square root of 9.
Maybe that's how I should do it for the notes right here. I'll put the square root nine. All right. I got a few more of these. You want to snap a picture real quick? Got it? Okay. 